Hey everyone, welcome in. It's Mr. Smith down here at the tennis court and we're recording our continuation of the 9-11 lesson from Tuesday. Remember, everything on this video will and can be assessed on our first quiz of the year in both government and global class this coming Thursday. So make sure you guys pay close attention. Make sure you take some good notes because the quiz is open note. And also make sure you sit back and enjoy the lesson. But the guy I want to introduce you to now is really the brains behind Al-Qaeda. That is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, also known as KSM. KSM was Al-Qaeda's main plotter, planner, organizer, recruiter. The guy did it all. Whereas bin Laden used his money, KSM used his networking and used his intelligence to recruit and train Al-Qaeda operatives who would lead attacks on the United States as well as all over the globe, both before and after 9-11. This quote right here from KSM gives you some insight into his mindset. We heard bin Laden on CNN interview talk about wanting to kill Americans. Let's take a look here at what KSM had to say. He compares attacking the United States and likens the United States to an elephant. A small bite here, a small bite there. The elephant is big and powerful, but a single flea is too small for it to stop. The elephant will eventually get sick and die. Eventually America will expose her neck for us to slaughter. So KSM certainly had the malice, the hatred in his heart like bin Laden. And like bin Laden, KSM proved to be an expert terrorist. And what is most amazing when looking back at the path to 9-11 is the fact that prior to 9-11 there were four major attacks on the United States by Al-Qaeda. The first was in February 1993. The World Trade Center was bombed by Ramzi Youssef who drove a homemade truck bomb into the garage and detonated it of the World Trade Center. Ramzi Youssef survived. He left the truck and then escaped the United States. His uncle, by the way, was KSM. So there's KSM's hand on the first World Trade Center attack, which really exposed security problems that unfortunately were never quite uh, taken care of uh, when it came down to later in time with the 9-11 attack in 2001. Speaking of Ramzi Youssef and KSM, they teamed up later to do more Al-Qaeda work in what was known as the Bojinka plot. This was a plan by them to hijack and crash 11 jets leaving Asia for the United States. 11. September 11th, there were four. In the Bojinka plan, it was 11. Now, the plan never materialized, and Ramzi Youssef, actually, this led to him being captured by law enforcement authorities in the Philippines, where he was eventually sent back to the United States and stood trial and was found guilty for the World Trade Center bombing. His uncle, however, escaped. What you needed about the Bojinka plot is that this is the genesis of 9-11. This is where the plan to use planes as weapons started. Let's skip forward to 1998, East Africa. Two American embassies were bombed by Al-Qaeda. 224 deaths total at both places, Kenya and Tanzania. Bin Laden took credit for this. Uh, it was considered one of Al-Qaeda's most successful attacks against the United States, and it came three years before 9-11. But the most current attack prior to 9-11 was when an Al-Qaeda suicide bomber drove a boat, a homemade boat bomb, into an American naval ship, the USS Cole. 17 sailors were killed. What this tells us is that for years, 9-11 was in the making. Four different attacks came against the U.S. prior to September 11th. So we have to point the finger somewhere. And the United States government no doubt deserves much of the blame for failing to put a stop to Al-Qaeda's rise. Could they have halted 9-11? Who knows? But we have to point the finger in four different places. First, presidential inaction. Three presidents, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush, all were in power during Al-Qaeda's rise. None took direct action against Al-Qaeda. Failure number two, I've got to point the finger at the FBI and the CIA. Both intelligence agencies failed to share key information. Both knew about bin Laden, KSM, but neither co collaborated. There was very little teamwork at this time. And the way that the government was set up, both groups kind of kept information secret from one another. Perhaps if they had worked together, they could have uncovered more information. And this leads me to failure number three, misread flags. We talked about the hijackers getting into the United States. Boy, there were lots of opportunities to sniff those out and put, to put a stop to that. But the government, unfortunately, just didn't have the foresight, and wasn't looking in the right places. And four, we have to blame our own sense of invincibility. KSM was chattering. 
out there on internet boards. Bin Laden was on TV talking about his plans to strike the United States. Nobody took those guys seriously. And unfortunately, looking back in hindsight, that was a big mistake. Following 9-11, though, the United States engaged in a massive global effort to root out al-Qaeda and go after KSM, bin Laden, and others. And this is where we come to the war on terror. Since 2001, the United States has been at war. We've been in Afghanistan since October 2001. Why Afghanistan? Well, after the 9-11 strikes, many of the al-Qaeda leaders, including bin Laden, including KSM, were hiding in, Pakistan, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Afghanistan is where most people believe bin Laden was, so the United States went after him. Bin Laden was not captured, however, in Afghanistan. But the United States has remained in Afghanistan. It's been our longest running war all the way back since 2001. So we're talking 19 years. It's the costliest and longest war ever fought in American history. Now, later in 2003, the United States invaded Iraq. Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. Iraq's invasion was one of the most controversial parts of the war on terror, mainly because the United States government went into Iraq and sold the war as part of the war on terror, even though the real reason we invaded Iraq had more to do about political and perhaps economic reasons. Under President Obama, the United States has continued the war on terror, mainly with increased drone strikes uh, throughout the region where al-Qaeda once was in power. And that has only further increased hatred towards the United States. And I would argue one of the most defining moments of the war on terror was in 2011, May 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed in a raid by Navy SEALs while bin Laden was hiding in Pakistan. These are just some of the highlights of the war on terror. But we have to understand that we are still at war. Our, our military is still in war zones around the globe. And so never forget that the world that you were born into has always been at war. And our government has and will continue to be fighting the war on terror for years to come. So where does this all leave us? Well, let's first talk about what changed here in the United States and around the world. First of all, with the United States, Congress snapped into action and passed many laws to increase its power to survey and prosecute alleged terrorists. This is known as the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act is something we'll be covering in government class, not so much global history, but it's good to be aware of it. The Patriot Act has given the government immense powers to spy and survey uh, alleged criminals, especially terrorists. And that has become one of the most controversial aftermaths of the 9-11 attacks. Speaking of controversial, nothing is maybe more controversial than the government's approval of enhanced interrogation techniques, also known as torture. The United States government gave permission to the CIA and other law enforcement agencies and the military to use torture techniques to get terrorists to give up information. There were black sites, and the most infamous of these was the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base in Cuba, where many suspected and known terrorists were held and tortured. So this is one of the most controversial parts of the war on terror, which is the fact that the United States government authorized, it no longer does, it has since condemned and put a stop to, to known uses of torture. But for a long period of time, the United States was using torture, and that was approved all the way from the very top of our government uh, to, to get information out of terrorists. But not all of, of the post 9-11 happenings have been so controversial. Without 9-11, there'd be no Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security is the same organization where TSA, the blue shirts at the airport, and our airport security uh, agents, they're housed in the Department of Homeland Security, as is Immigration Customs Enforcement, which is ICE. So that is something that fits under Homeland Security. There was no, no Homeland Security prior to 9-11. We mentioned bin Laden was killed, but KSM remains under U.S. captivity. He will stand trial. He was captured in 2003 in Pakistan, and he will have his trial next summer. So that is going to be something to watch. Uh, KSM, this is a photo taken of him when he was captured in Pakistan, looking quite disheveled and ragged. Uh, he will be on trial for 9-11 crimes and other terrorist acts in the United States next summer. Definitely something to keep an eye on. But let's not forget that with the war on terror, and as Al-Qaeda maybe has fallen off a little bit in terms of its global reach and power, new terrorist groups like ISIS or Boko Haram or other homegrown terrorists, people born in the United States with allegiances to terrorist groups have started to conduct terrorist attacks and have mounted serious attempts to overthrow governments around the world. To say that after 9-11, the United States has won the war on terror is a questionable statement because new groups have risen, new threats have, have come forward, 
and terrorist attacks like the Boston bomb, the Boston Marathon bombing, the Paris attacks, uh, some of the, the, the shoe bomber, the underwear bomber, the London attacks, you name it. The attacks that have gone on, and I'm, I know I'm leaving out a few, but there have been so many terrorist attacks since 9-11 conducted by Al-Qaeda or other groups that we just have to wonder, is this war on terror ever going to really cease? And so when you look at the global path of 9-11, I most want you guys to take away the fact that the past shapes the future. There were signs, there were signals, and there were paths leading all the way up to that day. And from that day, the United States and the rest of the world will never be the same, never has been the same, and we'll continue to monitor this year how our government and how global history has changed since 9-11. All right, everyone, well, that's it for your first YouTube video of the year. Remember, quiz on Thursday, so whenever you watch this, whether it's Tuesday night, Wednesday, uh, during our asynchronous day, or maybe even Thursday morning, remember, take notes and be ready for our first quiz of the year. It was a pleasure talking to you guys this afternoon. I hope you enjoy. You can leave a comment, you can subscribe, you can tell me how you think these will go, or what you're looking for. I'm looking forward to getting more feedback from you all. Take care, and I'll see you guys all back online Wednesday and in person or online Thursday. As always, remember, the past shapes the future. Take care. <music>